Based off what we know so far, what will the following two lines of code up here print? For i in range 3, print a. Well, if you guess that it'll print a three times, then you're right. Indeed, prints a three times, and this is pretty straightforward from what we've learned so far. The code right here, this three says repeat everything that's indented three times. So the print a will be printed three different times, and that's fairly straightforward. If we were to change this just a little bit and add to it, What will this code print out? Well, it's not too much different than the other code. It works like this. When I run it, you can see down here it prints A, just like it did before, three times. Then it prints B three times. And it does so just because I've got two loops. This is loop number one and this is loop number two. And this loop says, take all this indented stuff, print it three times, and when you're done, it goes on to the next line of code, which is right here, and print this three times. Okay, let's change this again a little bit. I'm gonna take these two lines and indent them. I have the same code that was there before, but there's a different indentation and what prints out is actually quite a bit different. Take a little moment see if you can figure out what this will actually print when we run it. Okay got an idea? Go ahead and run it. And here's what we've got. This loop right here says loop everything that's indented three times. So that means everything, including this for loop. So this will work three times. This says do everything inside of here three times. But this for loop itself is run three times. So what we have in this case is run everything inside of there three times, and inside of that print B three times. So we have three times three equals a total of nine Bs that will print out. And you can see that here we've got a number one, B's, one, two, and three. There's A number two. And then we just start that for loop again. So again, we've got B, one, two, and three. Here's our third A. Or as a computer does it, it's actually zero, one, two, right? And there's our three B's. For a total of three six, nine Bs. If I were to take this code and change it a little bit, like right here up at the top, if I were to make this a five, and then down here, if we were to make this a 10, now think of it a little bit, how many Bs will print out and how many As will print out? All right, have you thought about it? In this case, we've got a total of five As they're gonna print out because this print A is inside of this for loop. We will print out 10 Bs, but this whole for loop is looped how many times? Five times, right? So we're gonna have 10 times five, or a total of 50 Bs that'll end up being printed. If I run this, you're gonna see A, then 10 Bs, another A, then 10 Bs, another A, and then 10 Bs, and that basically whole process will repeat itself five times. If I were to change this again by moving this over, now how many Bs will print? Well, in this case, you're gonna have a total of five As and 10 Bs. The reason you don't get 50 Bs is because this for loop is only done once, it's not inside of this for loop, it's not nested inside of it, so it runs this and then this, and you end up with a total of 15 things being printed out, and you don't do any multiplication.
Think about it, if you have nested for loops, the nested loop is essentially multiplied. If you have sequential for loops, that is, if these line up and this is not inside of the other loop, then you have what amounts to an addition. You have 5 plus 10, whatever comes next, which for a total of 15 different things being printed out, and in this case, 10 Bs.